To this point, we've treated any battery in our circuits as a perfect supplier of current. That is, it doesn't have any internal resistance. It just supplies current to the rest of the circuit and that's it. Now, this isn't ever quite true. All batteries have some internal resistance. An internal resistance does effectively add another resistor to any circuit. In most cases, the resistance is very small and we choose to ignore it. Nevertheless, we need to acknowledge that it's there in order to better understand how batteries work. Also, there are times when a battery is old or defective and the internal resistance becomes quite high. In these cases, someone who doesn't understand internal resistance might be totally confused when they take the battery out of their faulty device and measure it with a voltmeter. The battery would look perfect on the voltmeter, but plug it back into the device and it still doesn't work. So let's take a look at how this works. Here's a battery, but this time we'll include a little resistor R to represent the internal resistance of the battery. If we measure the voltage of the battery while well, it's not in the circuit here, we're really measuring its EMF, its electromotive force. Since there's no current running through the battery, there's no voltage drop across this little internal resistance R, and we get the full 12 volts. The EMF of our battery here is 12 volts. Now, if we put our battery into our device, effectively placing the battery into a circuit, then current begins to flow. Now, when the current flows through the battery, we have a little voltage drop here. Voltage equals IR, the current times our resistor R. Now, when we measure the voltage across the battery, we're measuring the EMF minus the voltage drop due to this internal resistance. That is, EMF minus R I R. We call this the terminal voltage, the voltage across the terminals of a battery when it's in a circuit. In a battery that is working well, the internal resistance is really small. So when we calculate the voltage drop, I times R, it's really small, and we may measure 11.9 volts or more as a terminal voltage very little difference. Now if the internal resistance is large, the voltage, again I times R, can become very significant. It may drop down to 6 volts or even lower and our device wouldn't work, even though the EMF was and still is 12 volts. Now a knowledgeable car mechanic or electronics repair person will not only check a questionable battery's EMF, but they'll also check the battery under load. That is, the terminal voltage when the battery is in a circuit. They know that EMF may not tell the whole story. If the EMF and the terminal voltage are significantly different, the battery may have an internal problem, causing a large internal resistance. Many people who don't understand this simply check the EMF and assume that the battery is fine. Unfortunately, this often results in moving on to replacing other expensive parts or even throwing away perfectly good devices. By the time you're done this unit, you'll recognize the root of this error and be better at problem solving.